We're taking a look at the distribution of sample means and the empirical rule. If we consider scores occurring in the outer 0.05 of a distribution be non-representative, what are the upper and lower boundaries? So here's a population of individual scores. The mean is 100, skin deviation is 15. Below it's a sample. If we were to randomly select values in the population an infinite number of times, then this new sample would look just like the population. If we randomly select just one value, most likely a value is going to occur somewhere in the middle of the distribution. But now it's a high probability. Low probability, it might occur in the outer tail. Think about the empirical rule. It says that 68% of the population is within one standard deviation. So we have a mean of 100, standard deviation of 15. So our lower boundary is going to be 100 minus one standard deviation, bringing us to 85. And our upper boundary will be 100 plus one standard deviation, bringing us up to 115. So between 85 and 115, again, 68% of the values. Probability of randomly selecting a value within one standard deviation is approximately 0.68. According to the empirical rule, approximately 95% of the population is within two standard deviations. So again, our lower boundary is going to be 100 minus two standard deviations, taking us down to 70. And our upper boundary will be 100 plus two standard deviations, taking us up to 130. And the probability of randomly selecting a value from the population that is between 70 and 130 is approximately 0.95. Now, if we want to be more precise, it's actually 95% of the population is within plus or minus 1.96 standard deviations. And so doing the math on that, our lower boundary would be 100 minus 1.96 times 15, giving us 70.6. And our upper boundary would be 100 plus 1.96 times 15, giving us the upper boundary of 1.29. And so we can say with exactitude, if you will, that 0.95 of the population is between 70.6 and 129.4. And we have a probability of 0.95 of randomly selecting a value from the population and it being within those boundaries. Not all the values we will randomly select will be within those values. There is a 0.05 probability that we will randomly select a value that could either be uh, 70.6 and below or 129.4. Shown here is a random selection of 100 values. And you can see that there's a probability of 0.95 that a value will occur between 70.6 and 129.4. In actuality, we got nine values in this non-representative zone and 91 of them within the representative. So probability does not is not the same as saying that it's exactly what will occur. It just means that that's what is likely to occur, 95% of the time and 5% of the time. In this next sample, it nails it. Five of the 100 values are not representative, and 95 of them are. So we could keep randomly selecting 100 values at a time and taking a look here. And again, each time we randomly selected 100 of them, about 0.95 of them would be within our boundaries of plus and minus 1.96, and 0.05 of them would be outside those boundaries. If we wish to consider the middle 95% of the values as representative and the outer 5% as non-representative, then values that are less than or equal to 70.6 or greater than or equal to 1.94 are not representative, and the probability of getting a non-representative sample of size 1 is going to be 0.05. Okay, now let's consider that distribution of sample means. So if we consider sample means occurring in the outer 0.05 of a distribution being non-representative, what are the upper and lower boundaries? Uh, remember that there is that term, the standard error of the mean. We calculate it as a standard deviation divided by a square root of n. And let's say we're working with a sample size of 9. And by that I mean that every time uh, we want a sample mean, we'll randomly select 9 values from the population, we'll calculate their average, and then report that average. So for that distribution, we would calculate the standard error of the mean as 15, the standard deviation, divided by the square root of 9, 9 being the sample size. Now it's 15 divided by 3, or 5. So 5 is our standard error. Again, we have the plus and minus 1.96. We'll have 0.95 of the sample means will be within that uh, plus and minus 1.96. 
and 0.05 of them will be outside that plus and minus 1.96. In terms of our lower and upper boundaries, the lower boundary for this distribution of sample means for each sample of size 9 would be 100 minus 1.96 times 5, that's our standard error, uh, is equal to 90.2. And our upper boundary would be 100 plus 1.96 times 5, uh, which results in an upper boundary of 109.8. So if we wish to consider the middle 95% of sample means as representative and the outer 5% as non-representative, then for samples of size 9, sample means that are less than or equal to 90.2 or greater than or equal to 109.8 are not representative. The probability of getting a non-representative sample of sample size 9 is 0.05. And of course, the probability of getting a representative sample would be 0.95 or 95%. Let's take a look at the work of Christopher Magnuson. He made a really nice uh, distribution of sample means uh, demonstration. In this case, I'm going to randomly sample one value from the above population, and there it is. You can randomly sample another value. And you can see that most of these samples are occurring pretty close to the true population mean. It's unusual to get a sample that is more in the tail. This uh, sample, for example, is happening with a probability of 0.065. It's much less likely than a sample that's closer to the mean that has a probability of 0.838. So closer you are to the population mean, uh, the higher the probability. Okay, let's go to sample size 9. So as I increase the sample size to 9, the distribution of sample means is becoming more narrow. And the reason why is each sample is based upon 9 values. So we're getting more and more accurate, if you will, uh, closer and closer to the true population mean. If we took our sample size up to 25, Now, each sample is based upon 25 scores, and so again, it's going to be more and more accurate to the true population mean, meaning that this distribution of sample means will become more and more narrow. And impressively, we can specify both the uh, mean of this distribution of sample means, that's the same as the mean of the population, and we can also calculate the pretty easy to use formula what the standard error is going to be. Standard error will be the standard deviation, 15 in this case, divided by the square root of the sample size. So if your sample size is 9, then it's going to be divided by the square root of 9. If your sample size is 25, it'd be divided by the square root of 25. You just crunch the numbers and you'll get the standard error. And then you can plug in your standard error of the mean into our formula to figure out your lower and upper boundaries.